Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for another opportunity to share God's word together. I thank God for the word of God. Thank God that we have access to the word of God. The word of God reveals the mind of God, the provision of God, and the promises of God. I'm so glad that we can share God's word together this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We pray that, O oh God, you open our eyes of understanding. We pray that you will stop our ears, circumcise our hearts, teach us yourself, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, I'll be looking at the authority of the believers, the authority of the believers. Otherwise, we can say the believers' authority. Hallelujah. Our test will be taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1. The Bible says, And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. I'll read it again, talking about Jesus. And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Jesus said, All authority. All power has been given to me in heaven and earth. But this same authority, Jesus has bequeathed to us, his followers. Jesus has given us the power that belongs to him. And when we talk about authority, authority is a little different from power. Authority is the right to do something or to become something. In other words, it is delegated power. Authority, simply put, is delegated power. Power that is given to us by another. So the original power belongs to God. Bible says that once has God spoken, twice have I heard that power belongs to God. All powers in heaven and on earth belongs to God. But God has given us this power called authority to act on his behalf. It's called delegated power. Authority is delegated power. You are acting on behalf of someone. And that is our position as believers. We have authority given to us by the Lord Jesus himself. And in that Matthew chapter 10 verse 1, the Bible says he called his disciples to them and bequeathed and gave them power authority to act on his behalf. And that is what we're going to be looking at. I want you to know, child of God, that each and every one of us born again has been given the authority, has been given power, has been empowered to act for God. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus told disciples, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. After you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power to become my witnesses. So authority that we have is the power that God has bequeathed on each and every one of us. And we're going to be looking at different types of authority that a believer has in Christ. The number one authority I'm going to be looking at is the authority of sonship. The authority of sonship. This is the first authority that a believer received from Christ. In John chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right, he gave them the authority, to become children of God to those who believe in his name. 
As many who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior has been given the authority of sonship. We have received the authority to be called children of God and not only that, to act as sons of God. The day you got born again, child of God, I want you to know that God gave you the staff of office. And the staff of office is that of the office of sonship. It has the stamp of God's authority upon him. So I want you to know, no matter who you are, no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, male or female, the day you gave your life to Christ, you'll be given the authority of sonship, authority to be called sons of God, whether you are a male or a female. Paul told us that in the new creation, there is neither Jew nor Greek nor male nor female. So we are designated as sons of God in terms of authority, in terms of acting in the capacity of the hear of God. Hallelujah. I like this scripture in Romans chapter 8 verse 17. It says, and if children, talking about us, if children, then hears, hears of God and join hears with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. We are hearers of God and joined hearers with Christ. A hear is a person who is legally entitled to the property or rank of another person upon the person's death. So we are the legal title holder. We have the legal entitlement as a hearer of God to act as sons of God. This is the first authority that we have, you and I have. The authority of some shit, to be called the heirs of God and join heirs with God. What it means is that as a heir of God, you are legally entitled to, to all that belongs to God. By legal binding, you are, you are legally qualified to have access to all that God has. And one of such things I would like to share with us this morning is the right to use the name of Jesus. The right of sonship. The authority of sonship is the right to use the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus in the mouth of any believer carries the divine power, carries the divine authority, because when we call upon the name of Jesus, heaven backs it up. Because it's our title deed, is our or is our right, is our legal entitlement. And the name of Jesus, I want you to know, has been highly exalted above every other name. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. The Bible says, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus Every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the name that we have inherited as a hearer of God. This is the name that we have inherited as a son of God. The name of Jesus that is above every other name. Be it disease, be it sickness, be it situations, be it turbulence, be it storm, everything that has a name is under the authority of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the hearts of the king belongs to God. Every name that is named on earth, under the earth, comes under the authority of the name of Jesus. And as a son of God, we have the legal right, the legal binding, backing to use the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As a son of God, Jesus becomes your son name. Glory to God. That is above every other name. The name of Jesus, never trivialize it, never commonize it. The name of Jesus in your mouth carries the same power as the person of Jesus himself. Ooh, I feel like saying this again. Listen to this child of God. 
The name of Jesus in your mouth carries the same power as the person of Jesus himself. We have authority to use the name of Jesus. And when we say stop, stop in the name of Jesus, a stomp obey the Jesus when he was here in person, storms must obey you because that name of Jesus in your mouth carries the same power as the person and personality of Jesus. Glory to God. So as sons of God, we have the authority to use the name of Jesus. Glory to God. In Psalm 82 verse 6, the Bible says, I said, you are God's. And all of you are children of the Most High. In John chapter 10, verse 34, Jesus reinforced this fact as sons of God. We are gods. We have the authority, divine authority, to operate here on earth. And don't be surprised if the scripture says you are gods. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 1, the Bible says, So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as a God to Pharaoh. <laughs> so if God, if God made Moses a God to Pharaoh, how much more? Jesus has made us to be God on this earth. I praise God that you have authority of sonship. You and I, we can stand because we have obtained the right to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. The second authority we have as children of God, is the authority to reign in life, the authority to be in charge, the authority to reign as kings and priests unto God. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 says, and has made us, talking about Jesus, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The day you gave your life to Christ, Jesus has made you as king and priest to God. What do kings do? They reign. Kings reign. And, I, and as a child of God, we have the authority to reign as a king here on earth. We'll be given the authority to reign over all of God's creatures. We'll be given authority to reign on behalf of God here on earth. This has been the primary purpose of God in creation. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creeps on the earth. Originally, this is the purpose of God, that man will reign, we have dominion. Man was made to be king, to dominate the earth. But fortunately, we lost that right through Adam, through his disobedience and sin. But glory to God, that was not the end of the story. In Romans chapter 5 verse 17, the scriptures say, For if by one man's offense, that reign through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one, Jesus Christ. So whereas man lost the right to reign in life through the disobedience of Adam, but through the obedience of Jesus, the right to reign was restored to man. The right to reign, to have dominion, was restored to man. And when we say to reign, it means to exercise authority, to be in control, to be predominant or prevalent. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Kings reign by decrees. Kings reign, and that is who we are. Revelation 1 says, we have been made kings and priests unto God and the Father. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we reign. We have the authority. The power to reign. We are supposed to reign. And not to be dominated upon. Hallelujah. As kings and priests unto God. We are to exercise authority. 
over every area of our lives. Never again will you be made subject to anything. Rather, things should be subject to you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Things should be subject to you. Not the other way around. It's an aberration for you to be put under. You should be on top. Because that is who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. So the authority to reign has been given to us. We reign by declaring the word of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say to him, what are you doing? We reign not by our muscle, by our strength. We reign by declaring the word of God. We declare the word of God and the power of God backs up the word in our mouth. Mark 11 verse 23 says, For surely I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So we declare the word of God by faith. We declare what we want to see. Not we do not say what we see. We say what we want to see. And kings reign by what they say. And the Bible says the word is near your mouth. Even the word of faith that we preach. Romans chapter 10. The word is near your mouth. I want to encourage us this morning to begin to exercise our authority in the name of Jesus, by declaring the word of God, by exercising authority in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything around you will begin to be made subject to you as we stand in faith, declaring the word of God, declaring the word of God in the power of the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The last one I want to share with you about authority is authority over demons. Authority is over demons. We have authority over the powers of darkness. You will be liberated from living in fear as from today. You will be liberated from being so scared of demons and demonic powers because you've been given the authority. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 10 verse 17, the Bible says this, then the 70, uh, let me read from verse 19, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Jesus said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is the provision of scripture. So you and I have the authority and power over demonic powers, over demonic manipulations. We bring them under our feet. We crush them under our feet. In the name of Jesus, Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, I think verse 20, the Bible says, And the Lord shall cross Satan under your feet. The Lord shall cross Satan under your feet. This was the fulfillment of promise God gave in Genesis 3 verse 15. He said, And his seed shall bruise your head. We are the seed of the woman, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We bruise the head of serpents. We bruise the head of scorpions. We trap over all the powers of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, we have the authority in the name of Jesus. I declare to you today that no power of the enemy will be able to hurt you anymore. No power of the enemy shall come close to harming you anymore. Why? Because we have authority in the name of Jesus. We have authority over demonic oppressions. We have authority over demonic powers. Never again. I say never again will the enemy torment you. Never again will the enemy hold you in captivity. In the name of Jesus, 
I love this scripture in Colossians chapter 15. Colossians chapter 15 explains to us how we are to, supposed to walk in authority and why. Why? Because Jesus has defeated the devil completely. Glory to God. Colossians 2.15 says, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in need. Did you hear that? Jesus disarmed principalities and powers. He disarmed them. Hallelujah. They are without weapons. Jesus has disarmed principalities and power. To disarm means, dictionary meaning, to disarm means to take a weapon or weapons away from somebody. So what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary is to take demonic, to take weapons from the hands of demonic powers. And that's why the Bible says that the devil is like a roaring lion. It's a toothless lion because Jesus has disarmed him. If you must believe anything, you must believe the word of God. If you must believe anything, it must be the word of God. No longer shall demonic powers press you down at night that you cannot sleep. No more, no more. In the name of Jesus, I want you to, to stand up upon your authority and say, devil, you are under my feet. Get down under my feet. In the name of Jesus, you've got no power over me. You've got no influence over me. You've got no influence over my family. You've got no influence over my job, over my ministry, over my career, over my family. In the name of Jesus, you've got authority over demons. And the earlier we begin to know that, the better for us. Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 7, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He says, so, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you don't resist him, he will use ignorance to deal with you. But if you know that you have authority over satanic and demonic powers, you will resist him. You will say, devil, pack your Lord and leave. And the Bible says, he will obey. He will flee from you. Never again. Will you flee from the devil? Never again will you be scared of the devil in the name of Jesus. Stand on your faith. Stand on your feet by faith and resist the devil. Why? Because you have authority. I want to thank God for another time like this. I hope you have sincerely been blessed that the eyes of your understanding is open to know that you are a man of authority. You are a son of God. And because of that, you walk in the authority that Christ has given to you. Shalom. I want to thank God for your life. I want to encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I want you to leave comments, like, you know, press the notification button so that anytime I upload teachings like these, you will be notified and you will be blessed as you listen to it. We need to know what the word of God has said about us and we will grow in the confidence that the word has given to you. I'm Kingsley Toby and I know that God loves you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful time in his presence. Amen.